So there are basically four ways that we can generalize what we've already shown you. All right. So the first way that you might think of is we've already done uh, we've already done y. First we did y equals a naught, right? Then we did y equals a naught plus a one x i. And the third thing we could do, you think of, is polynomial regression, right? We just keep going with this. Y equals a one or a naught plus a one x one or x i plus, and we can scoot over here, plus a two x i squared, and we could keep going on and on and on. Okay, so there's there's polynomial regression, so we could keep going as, as far as we want in the polynomials, and we could optimize on that. The other thing that we can do is linearization of nonlinear relationships, and so what we can do is turn something that doesn't look at all like uh, like a linear relationship, so a linear would be this y equals a naught uh, plus a one x i, and so we can turn nonlinear relationships into linear relationships. Now we can't do this with any relationship, but we can do it with a lot of them. And so here's a, a screenshot from the book of what some of the things that they they show that we can do here. So for example, we can linearize. We can take uh, this y equals alpha one uh, e to the beta one x, and so. We could linearize that, so instead of having the axis being x and y, we have the axis being x and ln of y. So we just plug it out and plot it out with a with a log y scale, and so then we we just have this this transformation from y equals a one e to the b uh, b or to the a one e to the beta x, and that eventually it essentially becomes then uh, y equals our a naught, so that's our, our alpha is our intercept, and our b, our beta one is our slope. We can do the same thing with a, with a, a power relationship. We can also do the same thing with, um, with the the growth. They call it the saturation growth equation over here. So we can do that. In every one of these cases, we can turn the nonlinear relationship into a linear relationship and then once we've transformed it then we can just solve our, our same equation that we've been solving before y equals a naught uh, plus a one x i and then uh, we can just turn it back so that's uh, linearization of nonlinear relationships the third thing that we can do is multiple linear regression and so instead of instead of just adding powers here we can just add other x dimensions. So, for example, uh, y. That doesn't show up very well. For example, we might have uh, y equals a naught uh, plus a one uh, x one or x i, for example. Uh, but but not just x i. But a, let's erase, erase, okay. And this is a, we'll call it a1x1i plus a2x2i plus a3x3i, okay, and on and on. So what we can do then, and instead of going uh, and adding powers, we can add dimensions. So this is multiple linear regression. And then the other thing we can do is is we can write this out in a in a completely general form, and uh, so when we do that, then we have the the the, the equation a x equals b, and, and and we turn that into our a transpose a x equals a transpose b that I showed you. And then we can realize well, we, we our, our our basis vectors uh, go in a, right? Uh, and then our our um, okay. So so we can use we don't have to use 
the basis vectors when you when you look at it this way the basis vectors in, in the past have been the polynomials are just one example of a basis vector uh, a, a basis for our for our, our equations we could we could use sines and cosines we could use um, really anything we want for our basis and so that that general generalizes the entire uh, system of equations uh, so that is four different ways that we can generalize this least squares and it shows uh, it shows all the equations for at least for uh, cubic regression in the book the the multiple linear regression in the book and it also shows uh, how we linearize each of each of these relationships that I showed you so that's different ways that we can generalize least squares that we've already learned